And that brings us, but he's over the last year been one of our best journalists. And that's because he understands these people and he goes down and he integrates with them and he gets to know these people. These people relate to him. He knows their language. We conservatives don't know the language of the people at Zuccotti. We stick out like a sore thumb. And, and it is that type of investigative journalist that we need to be able to tell the true story because ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC will not tell you the true story of what's going on. The, mo the most important person sitting up here is Brandon Darby. And Brandon Darby to me is not just to explain what Occupy is, but he's the David Horowitz in my mind of our time in so much that he was the radical leftist running things on the ground for the radical left during Katrina. That is not insignificant. That was one of their major actions and one of their major successes. And he was in the Lower Ninth Ward, and when Jesse Jackson had to go down there, they isolated him to be the person that took him on the photo op where the press gaggle followed him. So these two leftists understand and, and for the purposes of clarity and truth want to tell the world what the true story of the story of 2012 is about. And the reason why Brandon is a hero to me is I'm going to tell you what he did and I'm going to tell you how it relates to Occupy. He worked with the FBI as an informant in which he informed upon two 20-somethings in the year 2008 who were part of an action, not unlike Occupy, that specifically isolated the 2008 Republican Convention. Does anybody remember the action, the leftist globalist action against the 2008 Convention? They called it the GOP Welcoming Committee. And do you remember being an, a, a delegate there or being a person walking into the convention center with heightened security and seeing the, uh, the, the police in, in riot gear. Why were they in riot gear? They were there because of the GOP welcoming committee. Do you remember that the, the night that John McCain spoke that uh, Code Pink somehow infiltrated the floor? They were coordinated. They were part of the GOP welcoming committee, Code Pink GOP welcoming committee. It was part of radical, international anarchist groups along with American leftist groups, I'm talking all it, with unions, all coordinating to tell you, Republicans or conservatives, that you shouldn't have the right to freely congregate and nominate your representatives. They wanted to intimidate us. What you saw at that GOP welcoming committee was an occupation. That was Occupy St. Paul. What did he do? He found out the two guys that he knew were planning on building, they did build, manufactured Molotov cocktails that they were going to use with a special kind of, of oil that burns skin worse than they manufactured the, the, that which would maim the delegates, the people attending it, and specifically going after the police. And he acted as an FBI informant. And as a result of that, is now persona non grata on the organized left for saving American citizens. What is wrong with the organized left that they can't see what we see that he's an American hero? Everyone remember ACORN? What did Wade Rathke have to say about you going to the, uh, what did Wade Rathke have to say, Brandon, about you going to the uh, police and stopping that which could have killed and maimed many people? He said it was a shame that Brandon Darby decided to snitch. That's Acorn. That's the Caucasian brother of the brother who laundered about $5 million, also Caucasian, from this group that helps poor people. Is Anita Moncrief around? She's another American hero. She's also going to be in this film. She understands the left. Acorn is a central force in Occupy, as this, will, as this film will show you. Lee Stranahan went down to Occupy. 
and he was taken around by a lovely young lady, and there are many nice people who, who, who have joined Occupy. I would argue that they're misguided, but that's my personal opinion. But some, they were given such vague instructions by Dylan Radigan intentionally. They were even told that Radiohead was going to be there. They were <laughs> said, let's try and get a mass movement started, and then we'll fill the gizzards with the poison, because then they'll be invested in it. Acorn is a central entity, and Lee and Brandon went down to Zuccotti and were taken on a, a, a tour of Zuccotti by a person who had been there since day one, who was assigned to them, who was part of the growing organic structure. And in that, she a matter of factly stated, because we had been reporting on the rapes and the sexual assaults, that it was unsafe for women, something that the mainstream media would not report because it would hurt their darling new counter tea party. But what she also said, a matter of factly, was one of the reasons why there's so much violence there is because of ACORN. ACORN's reformed everybody, and they're there doing what they've been doing for years. They are the shock troops, they are the ground army for the progressive movement, and they're back, and they were paying people $100 a pop, homeless people, drug addicts, to become part of the numbers game so that it would look good on television. Well, also, Andrew, they're also organizing the bank takeovers in San Francisco. That's who. Yeah. Acorn's, Acorn's explicitly the one. We have videotape of it waving you into the bank. Right. Well, anyway, I've said enough because we're, we can ask some questions here and people can introduce themselves. I said Lee is heroic for sticking his neck out on the line because his newfound friend, uh, Brandon, is, gets the snitch treatment, and he's getting the same treatment. I'd like everybody here to have their backs because what they're doing is a patriotic duty where they're, 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 it says nothing about their politics. That This has to do with a sense of right and wrong, and this movie is going to expose to you what I have argued for a long time, and I say it to their face, including to Terry Moran at ABC, what you do is evil. You knock down the Tea Party, and these are the good and decent people, and you build up a violent group of people who actively are pursuing the destruction of this country. This film will show you the people who organized Crawford, Texas. Do you remember Cam Casey? That was, the, that was an occupation. They occupied Crawford, Texas. And that was puppet masters taking a symbol of grief, a sympathetic figure, Lisa Fithian, who's obsessed with taking this guy down. She's a radical anarchist socialist who has a long history and the radical left, was long connected to Abby Hoffman. She's as nasty as they get. And this is a person who has said on tape that you cannot redeem this country, that it needs to be burned down in essence. Okay, this, these are the puppet masters of this group and they want to destroy it. So the only way to tell it is for people who are willing to put their necks out there on a line because the media is gonna destroy them uh, and the left is going to isolate them for destruction. And I'm so happy to be working uh, with David because every Occupy, David Bossy, because everywhere I've gone in Occupy, I kid you not, these people come up and grill me about Citizens United. Like, what do you think about Citizens United? They're the worst, they're the worst. I'm telling you, <laughs> whoever they hate, I love. Because the, they're truth seekers. Citizens United are truth seekers. And, and the very Supreme Court case that they hate is the embodiment of the new media revolution of us grabbing back the American narrative from the radical left. And Steve Bannon, who's one of my closest friends, and I've watched, he's a maniac, quite frankly. If you watch this guy work, he's a maniac. And I want to give you an anecdote, and it doesn't tie to anything. If you go on a day trip with him to New Hampshire, he brings a satchel filled with nine history books that weigh about 70 pounds. I don't know why, and it's always a different set of books. So if he's reading them while he's simultaneously making movies, 
he's got to be on some heavy duty Ritalin because I don't understand how this guy does it. He did the movie that to me is a corollary to this movie. What the media did to the Tea Party movement to try to destroy it and what it's done to create this, the left did and the media did to Sarah Palin. He did the movie The Undefeated. And what he did was to tell the story that the mainstream media would not say about Sarah Palin is that she had an 80% approval rating in, in, in uh, Alaska for a reason, and that she had bipartisan support in Alaska. The media had to destroy her, and the mainstream media aided and abetted the entire way. And he finally told the true story about Sarah Palin. And he's willing to walk through fire in order to do it and to be hated. The only way you're going to be able to be to tell the truth in this country is to be hated. So I tried to put together a group of people who are mutually hated, and we're going to tell you the truth about Occupy.